Long time no see. How long has it been since I did these episode reviews? Like a month ago? Well, I gotta make sure I do this because I have an Ace Attorney anime review to do. I'm Mega Man NG and I welcome you all to another Rise of the TMNT episode review. Yes, it is good to be back doing these. And I will also mention this one's a bit longer, for obvious reasons. Today we're going to be talking about episode 13, The Evil League of Mutants. Or, as I would say, every villain is Lemon's League of Mutants. Okay, that was a bit foul, but you get my point. Anyway, here's a deal. I'll provide a summary as well as some of the main points. And being that, yes, this episode was, in fact, a 30-minute one, you know things are going to be big. Very big. Let us begin. It begins with the turtles hunting down a pair of mutant crabs. Mutant crabs that have, can flex and be as dangerous. Sadly, the turtles get whooped real bad by them, only for them to be recruited by someone unknown. It isn't just them. Many that the turtles cross paths with also get recruited. Meanwhile, the turtles went to tra want to train, but Splinter has no interest in training them. It gets the turtles really peeved to the point that Splinter grounds them and strips them of their weapons. Ouch! But as for the villains that were recruited, it seems that Baron Draxum needs their aid for one reason. To destroy the turtles. Now it's one team of heroes versus an e evil league of mutants. Who will win? Can the turtles deal with their creator and his legion? That's right. New episode, new review. Plus, I will say that next week's episode is one I already reviewed, like last month. So if you haven't checked out the review, you should. Links in the description below. Yes, we got ourselves another 30-minute episode. The last one we had was in episode 7, and then way back in episode 1 when I reviewed Mutant Mayhem. This is the third one, and I got no words to describe it. Absolutely none. The main plot of this episode has Baron Draxum. And yes, he's back, voiced by John Cena. And I, I'm starting to understand that I kind of like how the show is actually saving Baron Draxum up so that when he does show up, he appears as a threat. And yeah, he still is a threat then as he is now. This time around, he decides to unite various different villains together to defeat the Turtles, aka his creations. And what follows is an insane showdown. It's not really insane, but it's Rise of the TMNT, so who am I to complain here? Speaking of which, Baron Draxum, like I said, makes a return here. We haven't seen him since Episode 7, and being the big bad, as well as an antithesis of Splinter, he decides to unite all the different villains together to beat the Turtles, and there were a lot. You have Hypnopotamus, Meat Sweats, Repo Mantis, the Sando Brothers, and even Warren Stone are part of this team. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder that, well, Baron Draxum decides to form his own evil version of the Justice League to take down the Turtles. So, that's a first. It really is. But you can obviously surmise that, yeah, they all have one thing in common. They've crossed paths with the Turtles, they got their butts kicked by the Turtles, and maybe it was time for them to do a bit of a change. Also, this episode marks the debut of the Sando Brothers. The Sando Brothers are voiced by Jason Mansukis and Paul Shear, respectively. And yeah, they do fit the bell for it nicely, and the Sando Brothers are no laughing matter. Mutant crabs that are very flexible, they have a tendency to flex, and also can fire miniature pincers, as you saw in the beginning of the episode in which, yeah, the turtles got their butts kicked by them. How they did it was hilarious. We also get our first musical number. It wouldn't be complete without a musical number, and it's the villains doing it. The villains getting their own musical number with Baron Draxum explaining stuff. It's actually pretty good. I actually liked it in two ways. First, it's actually good. Who would have thought that actually John Cena would be a good singer? And the second... It also provided a bit of backstory. We actually now know how the turtles were created. They were created by combining the DNA of, I believe, mutagen with a human being. A human being by the name of Lu Jitsu. Yes, Lu Jitsu in the Rise of the TMNT universe was an action star who surprisingly also competed in the Battle Nexus. Yeah, 
It competed in the Battle Nexus. And what happened to him? Yeah. It also explains that he was mutated into a rat. Now, I'm going to explain this in a bit. But yeah, this, all that, the Origins also brought up a revelation. Remember back in Episode 7 when Baron Draxum meant that the Turtles were his creations? Well, they amplified it one bit further with the fact that Baron Draxon combined mutant DNA with Lujitsu to form the Turtles. Hence why when they found out about it, they were blown away. They were blown away, they were shocked, and, I'm, and I was like, wow, I really didn't expect this to happen. I really like that being that Rise of TMNT is its own universe and they can do whatever they want with it. But what I liked even better was the amount of twists and turns. It's not much of a twist, but come on. It's just like, it was just hilarious seeing them find out. But it also makes sense because in the big end of this, like the big fight scene that gone on, they had to improvise based off one of Lujitsu's action films where he fought like in a fish market, having to use ladders and whatnot. It really does make perfect sense, but it's also kind of hilarious. It also means something more since with this, yeah, the turtles were pretty ecstatic. But the end of the episode also had another something else happening. The Foot Brute and the Lieutenant, aka Pinky and the Brain, who are in this episode for surprising reasons as minor characters, they end up meeting Draxum. Why is that? They both have one thing in common, their disdain for the turtles. I got a feeling that a partnership is on the horizon. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean it. And yeah, like I mentioned already, this episode confirmed that Lu Jitsu, yes, competed in the Battle Nexus before ending up being mutated into a rat by Baron Draxum. I have a theory. I have a possible theory about this because it was something that gnawed away at me. Since he was mutated into a rat, my theory is that this said rat turned out to be Splinter. I could be wrong, and if this theory turns out to be right, I would be surprised. I would be surprised that, that Lu Jitsu would end up being a rat, in this case be Splinter, would not only make sense, but would also be strange. Because you notice in the episode, Splinter did appear, and Eddie Bowser did a good job as always, and he was mostly watching Lu Jitsu films. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Dead Fish, as a nod to One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish by Dr. Seuss. And yeah, seeing that could pretty much maybe confirm it. I could be wrong about that. But either way, it would be a rather interesting theory. I don't even know if it was the plan for the writers, but it would be interesting. And imagine how they would react when Lu Jitsu would be revealed to be their dad. I don't know for sure because the end of the episode did say that it doesn't really matter if they have Lu Jitsu DNA. The fact of the matter is that Splinter is still their dad no matter what. Yeah, because Splinter wasn't very pleased with the Turtles being disrespectful towards them, so he grounded them and stripped them of their weapons. This was done pretty much well to teach them a bit of a lesson. How they got out of it is beyond me, I don't know. There are many, many highlights of this episode. There are many to count. The musical number being one of them, and I gotta admit, it was actually pretty good. John Cena did a fantastic job with it. There was the big battle between the Evil League and the Turtles, with the Turtles having to improvise and use various other weapons, such as swordfish and ladders to take them down. The revelation that, yes, Lu Jitsu's DNA is within the Turtles since, well, Baron Draxum's one crazy sod... And the fact that we may be seeing Draxum teaming up with the foot. I get a bad feeling about this. Not to mention the heartwarming ending. The ending was very heartwarming. Very, very, very satisfying. But hey, it just sets it up nicely. And I hope that the rest of the series can continue onwards. I liked it. I really couldn't find anything wrong with it. But I feel that for some weird reason, Splinter and Baron Draxum are somewhat similar. I don't know why, because Splinter has his own way of trading, which is pretty much watching movies. And the fact that Splinter can sometimes be lazy says a lot. Well, he can be blunt when he needs to be. And when he decided to ground the turtles, that was a bad sign. Whereas Baron Draxum, on the other hand, saw the potential in all these different villains. And seeing that was more than enough to unite them together to defeat the turtles. Now, in my, I could be wrong about this, but still... It is a great theory on that matter. I feel that Draxum is the antithesis, the opposite. Whereas Splinter can be lazy, sometimes he can be serious. Baron Draxum is always serious, and he really is a threat. He really is. And knowing that the rest of the season is going to be interesting, who knows what's going to happen? 
I really am looking forward to it. My final score for this episode is a 9 out of 10. A very good episode. An awesome musical number. A great collect bringing in all these different villains together for a 30-minute episode that just screams awesome. I love it. I really like it. And, and I hope that we get more of it down the line. Since, yeah, I like how they're keeping less, like, Baron Draxum away. Having less is more, and it works. It really does work, and I hope that we get more of it. Now, I did mention already that next week's episode is a repeat that I did. The Purple Jacket. And this is only going to give me a reason why they can't even get their episodes in the proper order. I don't know how, but I'm already... I'm using the TMNT Wikia just to have all these episodes in, and I still gotta fix some of these. So yeah, give me a bit of time, guys. It's all I can do, because I'm just one person who can only do so much. So tell me, what did you guys think of the episode? Was it good? Was it bad? Let me know what you think in the comments. And yeah, there won't be any episode review next week, because... Next week's a repeat, a.k.a. an episode I already reviewed. That is going to be it for this Rise of the TMNT review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's good to be back doing this because, yeah, surprisingly, these TMNT reviews actually do very well. And I'm thankful to every single one of you who take the time to watch, like, comment, and share these videos around. They help out big time. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button. It really does mean a lot to me. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell. Doing it all helps out to my benefit, and it really does. And if you would like to support the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. All it takes is a dollar a month. It really does. And I promise you this. I promise not to disappoint you. I am a man of my word, and I really do care for each and every one of you. It's my way of giving back to you guys for supporting me. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out. Cowabunga!